Okay. Um, can we talk about Melanie Gibb? I feel like we need to talk about Melanie Gibb. We talked about Zulema before, but I've been doing a lot more research on Melanie Gibb, who is Lori and Chad Daybell's friend. I don't even know if they have friends. So this is the thing. I followed this case, um, the Lori the Lori case when the kids were missing, right? Like that's sort of when I started following it and I was paying attention and I was sort of up on all the characters and the who, who and the what, what and all of that. And then the kids were found, their corpses were found horribly. And um, I was just like, okay, that's sort of what I expected had happened, blah, blah, blah. And I listened to like the Hidden podcast and um, JJ's grandmother is frequently on that podcast and she's in the comments and blah, blah, blah. So I know all the people and I had heard the name Melanie Gibb, but I hadn't really done a deep dive on her. So with the trial coming up soon, one of the trials, I forget who's going on trial. I think Lori's going on trial first. Anyway, um, I started watching some like videos and stuff just so I could sort of get a sense of Melanie Gibb. This is what I have gathered. She and Lori met like through something church related while they were like preparing for the end times. Apparently, Okay, let me back up for one more second. Um, I'm not a religious person. I was raised in like a super, super religious household, a super, super religious like overall family. But personally, haven't been to church in 30 years, don't plan on going back. That notwithstanding, like I don't have a problem with religious religious people. It's just like not for me, right? And so I know a lot about, I know a little bit about a lot of different religions. And I know like the LDS people, like they um, they stockpile, they keep like extra food, extra light bulbs, batteries, whatever. Great. Good for them. I have no issue with that whatsoever. So I guess at one of these like how to stockpile in times, whatever kind of situations, Lori and Melanie met, or at least they attended some of these seminars. Okay, great. So you got a friend from church. Terrific. You could be fast friends. And then somehow Chad comes into the mix. Not entirely clear about how that happened, but fine, do you? At what point do you, I mean, I guess it's the frog boiling experiment, right? Like you don't wake up one day and there are dead kids or you don't wake up one day and you're like, oh shoot, how did I get in this cult? I didn't plan on joining a cult, but next thing you know, I'm in a cult. So you re realize that your new friend is up to some shady business. Like, okay, she's probably cheating on her husband and she's running here, there, and everywhere. And she has an inappropriately close relationship with her brother. Mm, okay. There were a lot of red flags about Lori along the way, in my opinion. And I can see where like, oh, we have this religious connection. And so like, that might help you to overlook a lot of things. But then when she's cheating on her husband and he's cheating on his wife and then folks start dropping dead, at what point do you go like... Mm, these are not my people. Like, I thought they was my people. These are not my people. Um, I'll tell you what it is for me. One dead body. The first, the, When there's one dead body, I'm going to bring the casserole. I'm going to offer my deepest condolences. I'm going to be your friend. I'm going to be there for you. Um, but when other people start, like, disappearing, away, mm -mm, mm -mm. it turns out I might not be that loyal a friend. Or maybe I just have good common sense. It's a lot of dead bodies. And Melanie Gibbs was around for a lot of these dead bodies. And now she casually was like, well, yeah, you know, before they killed the kids, blah, blah, blah. Melanie, girl, you are having too much fun. You, Considering the normal number of corpses associated with these people, Miss Melanie is having too good a time. Now, Kay Woodcock, whose beloved grandson was brutally murdered, um... Yeah, I see her on some stuff, but she's keeping it low key. I feel like Miss Melanie, every time they turn on a camera, she's like, I'm here. I'm here. Interview me. Ask me questions. I know things. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play junior detective and I'm going to call my friend and I'm going to record this phone call and then I'm going to turn it into the police and then I'm going to be on national TV, maybe court TV. You'll pick me up. Melanie is having too much fun. What does Melanie know? I feel like she's downplaying her involvement in this and maybe she has no involvement. I don't know. Um, I don't trust her. Like, she seems like a perfectly lovely woman, I guess. I don't know. But um, something about her is shady. Uh, where is her ex-husband? She had a boyfriend. Is he still alive? Is he a zombie? Like, when they start changing people's names and making predictions about the future, and okay, some of that might have been part of your religion, but don't you need to go talk to a preacher, a bishop, a priest, somebody in authority to be like, 
Hey, um, are we allowed to cast out demons? Because I don't know if we're allowed to cast out demons. Like, girl, you was talk casually talking about how y'all got together to figure out how to cast out a demon. That's going to require a higher authority, not just you and idiot Chad. Like, mm-mm, mm-mm. And you notice how Chad systematically got rid of all the other men involved in this story. So he's the only one. Also, he's hideous. Like, yes, I am vain and shallow. What did anybody see in this man? It certainly was not his sparkling grave digger intellect. Like, this is all a mystery to me. Did their like deep belief in one another and their shared faith cause them to gloss over a world of like foolishness and crazy? I do not know. But, um... I'm going to need everybody to just tune up their discernment a little bit more. And uh, if folks start dropping dead near you, like one, okay, people pass away. But more than one? And if anybody mentions zombies, I'm telling you right now, I'm out. I'm out. I, I can't. I can't. I will love and admire you from a great distance. You can't come to my house. You can't eat at my table. Mm -mm. You can't even get a ride in my car. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. I'm going to point you in the direction of the nearest bus stop or train station and wish you my very best luck. Um, but nah, nah. So um, be careful out there, y'all. And I'm keeping an eye on Melanie Gibb. I want to know where her ex-husband is because she might have cast a demon out of him and cast his spirit right out of his body. I don't know what she's up to. I don't trust her. Y'all be easy.